components of framework in dotnet we have the two main important components of dotnet framework that is here clr stands for common language runtime clr stands for common language runtime and you can call bcl or fcl that is base class library or framework class library in clr when we talk about the common language runtime we need to talk about cls and second one is cts cls stands for common language specification and cts stands for common type system so let us start with the clr co common language runtime what is this clr clr is the runtime execution engine of our dotnet clr is the runtime execution engine of our dotnet and it acts as the interface between dotnet applications and the operating system it acts as the interface between operating system and dotnet applications the clrs provide many features like it loads and executes the code and next it manages the memory and next it converts the intermediate code to the native code and it handles the exception so these are the features provided by the clr that is common language runtime you can say the heart and soul of our dotnet application is clr without clr we cannot we can develop the application but after developing the application you need to execute that one so without clr you cannot execute the application so without clr the developing of applications is waste so we need the clr is the first and foremost component to develop the apply to execute the application and here in this we have cls and cts what is cls cls stands for common language specification it is the common language specification when we are going to write the programming language here we are we have to follow some syntactical rules that is nothing but those syntax rules we are going to call as com language specification we are going to call as language specification in dotnet we have several languages like c sharp dotnet vb dotnet v c plus plus etc so here each and every language will follow its own syntax and one language cannot understand the other language syntax for example if you take the example of c sharp dot net and vb dot net here in c sharp dot net each and every statement must and should end with the semicolon in semicolon is the statement terminator it is the statement terminator and when coming to the vb dot net here each and every statement should not end with the semicolon here it should not end with the semicolon so these are the basic syntax rules which we have to follow from language to language so the syntax rule differs from language to language but clr can understand all the language syntax because it follows its own clr will be having its own language specification so that whatever might be the language each and every language will be converted into the intermediate language by with respect to the compiler if you are using c sharp dot net the cs is the compiler which converts the c sharp dot net code into the native code that is nothing but intermediate language in between you will be having the intermediate language that intermediate language is same for all the language and that intermediate language will be understandable by the clr so clr will be having its own language specification next is cts cts is common type system in common type system it deals with the data types here we have several languages so here each and every language will have its own data types each and every language will have its own data type and 
one language data type cannot be understandable by the other language data type but here clr can understand all the languages data type because clr will be having its own data type for example if we take the cts example we have c sharp dot net and vb dot net here in the c sharp dot net we are going to use int as the data type in c sharp dot net we are going to use int as the data type but coming to the vb dot net we are going to use integer as the data type we are going to use integer as the data type but clr will be having its own data type that is in 32 here when we are using c sharp dot net the csc c sharp compiler will be converting the int data type to the in 32 and whereas in vb dot net vbc vbc it will convert to the integer data type to the in 32 so clr can understand all the languages data types so this is these are the two cls and cts which provides rules and regulations to the languages cls will provide rules and regulations of the syntactical rules and regulations to the languages and coming to the cts it will provide data types rules and regulations to the languages the second component of .NET framework is BCL or FCL that is base class library or framework class library. Here this base class library is divided into two types. One is user defined class library, user defined class library and second one is predefined class library. In earlier languages like C and C++, we used to call like header files. Coming to the Java language, we call it as package. Coming to the .NET, the user defined class library, we call it as assembly. And the predefined class library, we call it as namespace. We call it as namespace. Namespace is nothing but collection of predefined classes and methods present in it predefined collection of classes and methods is nothing but namespace in dot net we have using system is the namespace in dot net we have using system using system is the namespace where using is the keyword and system is the namespace using includes the system namespace here in the system you will be having collection of predefined classes and methods present in it here using this predefined class library we can develop the application within less time because predefined means already inbuilt classes and methods are present in the predefined class library when coming to the user defined class library here we have the assembly assembly is nothing but a small unit of deployment small unit small part of deployment is nothing but assembly in assembly this particular thing the user is the programmer is going to create the assembly the programmer is going to create the class and methods these are nothing but assembly here assembly we can call it contains dle either dle dll or exe file it contains either dll or exe file what is the difference between dll and exe here first difference is the DLL is nothing but the dynamic link library. DLL is the dynamic link library and EXE is the executable file. Dynamic link library and here it is the executable file. And this DLL, the purpose of DLL is reusability. You can reuse this DLL. The purpose of DLL is reusability and exe file is the output file output application here you cannot open the DLL you can only reuse the DLL in other application and exe file is the output file you can open the exe file you can see the output of the particular application for any 
library any application either the dll or exe file will be created for any application in dotnet either the dll or exe file will be created this dll it will not contain main method it does not contain main method and exe file it contains main method here this dll file it does not contain main method and exe file contains the main method that's why it does not contain main method it is going to create a dll file it contains the main method it is going to create a exe file that is output output file here dll we cannot uh, individually run the dll it can be used in other application here the exe file can be run individually this is the difference between dll and exe in the base class library you are having the these two types of class libraries user defined and predefined